main thing is not to let it define you. You know, don't make a career out of being a single mum because um, that just seems such a waste, you know. What about all the other things you are? Um, and I, I think it teaches you things like, you know, very good life skills, time management, management of any kind, communication skills, you know, dealing with conflict, all those kind of things. And it's amazing how um, well equipped you are then to deal with life in general after being a single mum, because you've had to hold pretty much every position in any given company that you might want to work in, you know. Um, you've been everything from the kind of bottle washer to the top executive, you know, and you've had to wear so many different hats. I do think it shows you how resilient you are, and it really, really increases your opportunities to learn new skills, you know, DIY, um, financial planning, <laughs> you name it really, car maintenance, all those things, I think I would have been far lazier about learning some of those things had I not been forced by necessity to, to, to get a bit smarter about them. My name is Vivian Smith. Um, I'm the author of a book called The Single Mum Survival Guide, How to Pick Up the Pieces and Build a Happy New Life. I also have a coaching business, so I work with a lot of single mums in my coaching as well. Um, my coaching company is Personal Breakthrough Coaching for the Life You Deserve. The problem with the breakdown of a relationship is you're often left with a feeling of having unfinished business, unresolved issues, things that you didn't say, things that you wanted to make clear. Um, things that you wanted to rant and rave about. And the problem is that if you try to deal with these in everyday life, what might happen is that you moan to your kids about it, not going to be helpful for them, they need to feel positive about their other parent. You could end up by blurting some of the, the issues that you have, the angst that you have out when you're doing the handover with the children. Again, not a good idea, often happens. Um, you could end up by taking various forms of revenge or you know, trying to tell everybody, including all your mutual friends, etc, etc, his family, whatever. And the problem with that is that it can often get you into more trouble, really not resolve the issues but just perpetuate them. So what I help people to do is, even if they're not in front of their ex, I help people to reach a place of resolution, a place of completion if you like. And it's amazing how effective it is, even if the person that you're talking to isn't there. Actually getting it off your chest, and we've got some really, really good tips and techniques for doing that. And again, the forgiveness process is one of those, so that you're all clear, you're all straight, you've said your piece, you've said what you're still sad about, you've said what you think they, you added to their lives, you've said why you often got angry with them, you've said what you regret, perhaps. Now, the interesting thing is the person doesn't need to hear this, but once you've expressed it, it's then possible to move on and create a totally different relationship with them. Because it has to be a totally different relationship with them. You will always be connected if you have children. You will always need to communicate with that person. So I can help you to actually express what you still need to say. It's a little bit like having the last word, but in a safe and controlled environment. So it doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't damage you, and it doesn't damage your children. Realising that it's a gift that you give yourself, um, that if you are unable to forgive, the only prisoner is you. So once you forgive, you set the prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. If you want to go on and perhaps date again, maybe form another relationship, and certainly if you want to co-parent effectively, because your children are witnesses to all of this and very often victims to all the arguments and bitterness that, that surrounds um, a broken down relationship where there is no forgiveness. So if you want to, if you like, help your children to move on as well as moving on yourself, I think forgiveness is an essential part of it. And it's something I know that people struggle with. I struggled myself. In fact, writing this chapter was very hard for me. But I really, really learned a lot about myself. And in many ways, it healed some of my wounds too. Uh, so I do understand, and I'm very empathetic to the various, but how could I do that when he did this or that? You know, really, believe me, 
it is the only way to move on. Um, so that's important. But also then looking at, you know, should you decide to move on and perhaps date again, where do you start? What, what are you looking for? What are the do's and don'ts, if you like? And so we've got some very, very good dating advice. Um, and also what to look for in your next partner. Because the clearer you can be about what you want and perhaps what you don't want will mean that you're not just another statistic, but you can actually learn from your broken down relationship and learn what you'd like instead. Um, so a very important part of, of that is, is being very clear about what you want and avoiding some of the pitfalls, some of the rebound relationships and the crazy behaviour that people will often find themselves indulging in, possibly because of all the emotional trauma they've been through. I don't think anyone except for another single mom really understands what that's like. That kind of stir crazy, breaking out of everything kind of period you go through when you're first on your own, when you're first single again. And um, I have no problem with people having a wild time at all, but there are ways to do it so that the kids stay safe um, and you stay safe. And that you have some fun, which is after all what you need. Build up your confidence. Um, give yourself a bit of an ego boost, because let's face it, we all need that after the breakdown of the relationship. But in all seriousness, that you actually have a productive time. And it may be that you decide, as quite a few of my contributors did, they're really quite happy on their own. Um, what if you're on your own and you're not happy about it, but you're waiting for Mr. Wright to come along? How do you feel comfortable whilst you're there, whilst you're waiting there? So one of my chapters is on being contentedly single. You know, how to find a way to actually be comfortable in that space. And there's an old uh, truism that, you know, in order to be happy in company, you've got to be happy alone. So it's really about understanding how to be comfortable in that space. It may be that you're always going to be on your own, and maybe that's a choice. It might be that you want to move into another relationship, but you want to make sure not to make some of the classic mistakes that we often hear about. And then we even talk about moving on um, to the extent where perhaps you're blending two families together. Um, step parenting is never easy, I should know, because I'm a step parent myself. Uh, but it's also difficult um, for the children. Um, so there's lots and lots of fantastic techniques and advice and practical help in dealing with all of these issues. And what I really want it to be is something that you're having a bad day, you're stuck in a problem with perhaps legal issues or financial, so where can I turn? How do I get some sensible advice? And this is what you do. You pick up the book and you flip through and think, oh, there we go, that's what I needed to hear. You know, someone else has been through this, I can read what happened to her. Or here's an expert who can give me the great advice on what to do first. You know, should you contact a lawyer sooner or later? Um, do you want to consider mediation rather than perhaps an adversarial divorce, for instance? Um, you know, how do you cope with this situation? I really wanted it to be a, a sort of one-stop uh, resource for single mums. But then we look at the spiritual stuff as well. So I'm very interested in people starting to heal in, a, in an emotional way. So looking at your, um, the way that you deal with the past, the way that you move on to the future, and the way that you feel comfortable in the present. So there's some wonderful um, tips and techniques. Um, again, I'm, I'm a coach and I've also spoken to other experts who do coaching or counselling. Um, so that you know, you'll find a good way for you to be aided on your journey, if you like. Um, a good way for people to help you along the way. And because um, I care about my readers, I've also made sure that all of the experts offer a little something, a little goodie for a reader if they want to take things further. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this will be the book that I was looking for when I was a single mom, and I hope to be able to help others. Um, and just give them reassurance that they're not alone, and there are people out there not only going through the same situations, but who've been through it and survived and triumphed and are now flying, not just crawling along as we, we do at the beginning, but really flying. From all the single mums I work with, the one thing that comes out the loudest and clearest is how much they love their kids. And they hate the idea that because they're feeling emotional, wound up and angry and upset and confused, that somehow they could be adding to their children's confusion and upset. Um, because 
you know, we're adults, we have more resources, we have better ways of processing things, and children really don't. And they really don't understand what's happening, and they don't understand what they're feeling. So the ability to stay calm under pressure is really, really key. And there's some fantastically easy techniques I can teach people so that whenever they want to, literally like at the flick of a switch, they can get themselves into that state of mind. It could be calm, patient, it could be feeling confident and strong, you know, when they need to be making a good impression or really getting their case across. So I can help with that kind of thing, literally changing your emotional um, and behavioural sort of frame of mind, if you like. In many ways, I could actually say that becoming a single mum totally changed my life. Um, and for that reason, because most of the changes are positive, I couldn't say I regretted it. I might have regretted the way in which it was done, or the way I had to find out, or some of that stuff could have been done better, I think. But really what it did was it made me absolutely determined that this was not the end of my life, that I was going to turn it around. And it showed me more clearly than anything has ever done what I'm made of, you know, my strengths and how determined I can be. And sure enough, it did change my life. I decided that it was time to have some fun. Um, so I had a lot of fun going out on dates and um, just, you know, the world's your oyster, really. You can start again. You can think about where you want to live, what you want to do, do you want to do a different job? And all these things happened to me, actually. Uh, but the other thing was it forced me to turn it around and write the book, which I started writing at the time. I was determined to find a way to help other people in my situation. So in a way, it's been responsible for a change of career as well, because I would never have written the book had this not happened to me, this major event. I would never have gone into counselling, I don't think, unless I'd been made to examine my emotions and find ways to get over what happened. Um, and the other thing is, of course, I would never have met my lovely current husband. So all that had to happen in order for me to be where I am in my life now. Um, I think you learn a lot about yourself as long as you learn from it and use it to make your life better, then I think it can be a very, very positive thing. I have a much stronger bond with my children as a result of being a single mum. There's nothing quite like the knit you get as a single mum with your, with your precious children. And you really do learn far more about them and yourself as a result. So I, I, I would say that my relationship is much closer with my children than it ever would have been if I been in a normal, whatever that is, family situation. What we've perhaps all come across in our lives is a person who never quite got over it, who's remained in victim mode. And whilst there are some benefits, strangely enough, to being in, in victim mode, you know, people feel sorry for you, and they make a big fuss of you, um, they give you a lot of sympathy and support, there is a limited time that you can play the victim card. And I remember meeting someone when I was single who said to me, yeah, but there's only a limited time, amount of time you can dine out on that story, isn't there? And I thought, yeah, very, very good point. Do I want to be defined by the fact that I was left with two small children? Do I want to be defined by the fact that I'm an abandoned single mother? And my answer was very definitely, no thanks. There's so much more to me than that. One of the things I ask my clients is, yes, and what else are you? Is that all that you are or is there something more? And we keep going until they realize that, yep, they're a really great human being. They have lots of resources, they have lots of talents, they have a bright new future, they're a wonderful mum, they're a fantastic friend. On and on we go. Sometimes when you're in victim mode, it's very, very hard to find a way out of it. And I really give people the ladder, here we go, up you climb, so that you, yes, something bad happened to you, but look how you've turned it around. Look what you've done with it.